this time on Highway Through Hell. Holy. A spectacular crash. You good? Oh, oh, oh. Is a heavyweight cliffhanger. Nothing always us. Awesome. A back road challenge for Al. Come on, baby. Is a long way down. Holy freak. And a wrecker like no other. This truck is a part of history. Joins Jamie's fleet. <laughs> Anybody know it's a canyon fight? That's brutal. In British Columbia's Fraser Canyon, early spring. I don't know where the hell this snow's coming from. Is anything but. The Hell's Gate Highway 1 is on heavy snow. For drivers on the low elevation route. There's two times that storms catch people off guard. The first one in the last of the season when nobody expects it. 50 kilometers north of Hope. There is a crash before the tunnel. It's out. It just snowed like crazy right out of nowhere, man. In a 25 ton wrecker. If you don't pay attention here, it'll bite you in the ass. Jamie Davis heads to the scene. Roads are really snow covered. I'm traveling with caution. I'm gonna scout this wreck out. It sounds like it's a major job. The beginning stages of this is really coordination. Ball going. Holy. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, this is one of the craziest wrecks we've ever attended in 10 years. He just, he just walked away. He climbed up this way faster. A long ways down. Truck goes over the bank 200 feet. Probably one of the longest ones that I've ever done. And it's a thousand feet to the bottom. Oh my God. Wow. That's gonna be recovery job of the year, that one. Fraser Canyon. Oh, it, it's steep. Jamie is first on scene at a jaw-dropping wreck. It's clinging to the side of a mountain. It's a crazy situation. A loaded transport careened 200 feet down the bank miraculously staying upright. That must have been a ride and a half, holy man. One of the weirdest ones I've come across ever. The driver walked away from that crash. Unbelievable. You got luck. How to get that up without tearing it apart is going to be a tough job. It's a mission no single wrecker can handle. This is going to take some heavy gear to get up the hill. This will be an all-day job tomorrow, pulling that out of there. We're going to have to bring the right people. I'm going to make the calls. The so recovery is going to be done tomorrow? Yeah, in the morning, everybody else is doing this is going to be a huge, big event. Be a long one. The next morning. 
120 tons of heavy rescue rolls to the crash site. This has got to be major. In a 70-ton flagship rotator... Today we're heading up to Hell's Gate. We're going to pull out a semi. ...is aggressive towing's Jason Davis. I put a call in to my brother later on. I'm going to go up there and we're going to give him a hand. In a second rotator... Jamie wants two rotators. Jamie gets two rotators. His operator, Chris Mervin. In your career, you get to go fishing over the edge of a cliff a handful of times. It's going to be a fun day today. <laughs> 10 minutes north. First time of control care. Can I stop or I'm defending? Uh, you're stopping as well. Copy that. Jamie steps on Brandon, runs traffic control. I'm the eyes for the team, and I make sure everyone's safe. All sides are stopped, and you guys are clear to come through. OK, buddy. This is going to be wagged. Big recovery. Up on health gate. Oh, oh god, that's straight down. Because that's your reading for that spot. It's a couple hundred feet straight up and down. Definitely a holy crap wreck. That's a hell of a gun. This is pretty intense. It's pretty incredible how far these trucks can go down and guys can still walk away from them. Jason's team has been called in. You gotta be sideways to this the whole time? Yeah. For their specialized iron. I'm just gonna swing it around. To attempt the recovery in a single lane. Doing work off the side, the rotators are definitely a little more tippy. It don't look like we have a lot of room here. We want to keep one lane of the highway going. So it's going to be a little sketchy. Even without riggers. Boys, watch your feet. Adding stability. It's a lot of danger. There's no room for error. That's what I'm worried about, right? We're concerned with sideways tipping and pulling us over the bank. Okay, well, what are we sending down for rigging? To run lines to the wreck. Ooh, that's tight. Swamper Jordan coming for it and Jason's son, Aaron. Are we going down there now? Face daunting terrain. I have never seen anything like this before. There's a lot that could go wrong. I just gotta focus on getting it done. With Jordan now ready to rig. It is looking sketchy. Merv. Jordan's calling me for see what he has to say. Hello. Gets a long distance call. What do you think? That's the best way to get the words up to the top of the cliff. On this kind of pull, we need to go to the axles. The first pull we make here today is going to be one of the harder ones because it's jackknifed. That's where the drag is. That's what we need to the axle. Yeah. yeah. With lines from the two rotators, they'll try to straighten the rig and power it up the 200-foot bank. You're pulling the whole tractor sideways before it actually straightens out. So it creates a lot more resistance for us. Hey, we're all hooked up down here. Uh, this will be the telltale, man. This line's coming up. Be careful. Jason and Merv. Yeah, this is where it gets sketchy. Begin the 40,000-pound cliffside pull. Oh, we're just starting to move her down there. It's very slow and steady wins the race. A little more of you. But suddenly... Oh, there goes my truck. We're sliding a little bit too close to the edge. 
It's a bit of dangerous, actually. You got some tension, Murph? You stand a pretty good chance of something catastrophic happening. Fraser Canyon. <laughs> Team aggressive. Slowly, slowly. Is in an epic cliffside gamble. Oh, that was horrible. There is serious potential of a three quarter of a million dollar truck going down the bank. But Jason and Merv. It sucks, but nothing we can do. Uh, we'll try it all different ways, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Are determined. Tighten right up. To do what it takes. Even though we're sliding, we're not going to stop. Take a little bit of finessing for a bit. Inches, my friend. You, me, eh? Hey? Yeah. Two hundred feet down the bank. It's heavy. The forty thousand pound semi. We got the truck being sunk into the ground. There is a lot of resistance. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Slowly straightens out. <laughs> Here she comes. You good? Oh, yeah, we're moving. Just getting this behind us is a big sigh of relief. But the punishing mountainside. We're getting a lot of rock behind it now, right? Deals a new problem. Debris, it's piling up. We're adding more and more resistance. I'm floating. I'll get my front. That's gonna be a real headache. Oh, all it. A half southwest. They get excited real quick. Now acquiring heads toward big timber. The heart of Sasquatch country. Harrison, British Columbia. Just the possibility of coming around the corner and there's a big old Sasquatch standing there. That's why I do it. Just be careful on a couple of the turns there, right? Oh, they're logging out of here today. In this area, lumberjacking has been a way of life since the early 1900s. Logging equipment's been going up and down this road for a hundred years. This is nice. Out back at BC, it's one of the most beautiful places in the whole wide world. But arriving at a logging camp, Al must shift focus. Safety first here. To a Herculean machine. One of the most dangerous, most heavy, most oddball thing you'd ever tell. It's a dinosaur. A yarder. It's not for the timid, that's for sure. Weighing 100,000 pounds, yarders wrangle logs off extreme banks. They basically operate like an old-fashioned clothesline. She ready to roll? It sticks out a bit on the side. <laughs> They've been around for an awfully long time. 
business or machinery was built to last. Wrapped at this job site, hauling the 70-foot garter out will be no easy task. We're not designed for going up and down hills a lot. You go over the edge, there's no coming back. As good as it's gonna get. After a pre-trip inspection, we're not logging, we're not making money. All right, well, let's go. Al and the customer roll out. Keep an eye if something goes on back there. Why go down 30 kilometers here? Hauling the 50-year-old giant. That thing always us. It's a narrow, windy run. You get that thing out of control on the back, it's whipping. That'll for a pretty good loot. Not a lot of guys around anymore that know how to tow those things. Holy freak. Oh, the rocks on the road. It's like marbles. It's very dangerous. Oh, I just hope I don't spin out on this. She's straight down. Deep in Harrison logging country. What's happening? What's going on? Harrison. Al and Big Green. Face a deadly plunge. A heart pounding adrenaline. A little bit of a scare. It's gonna take a little more weight this time. Okay, Roger. With a 100,000 pound log yarder in tow. A little tense when he spun out there. And the customer piloting. Al retools his approach. Adjust our axle weights, put a little bit more weight onto the tow truck. Now, hopefully, we can lift off. Let's go easy on it. The rugged machine. I got traction. He's on the move once again. The design that goes back from my great-grandfather's day of logging. Even though it is old, it's a very high production unit. Bottom of the hill here in the lake. After hours in the back country. It's a happy day when we unhook from these things. Al is finally out of the woods. Every day when you make it home. Makes you want to hug your family just a little tighter. My family name is on the line for each and every job. Doing yourself a good day. Yeah, watch your back out there. One hour northeast. That house game is direct. Aggressive's heavy iron. Oh, floating flat holder. Is riding the edge. Really starting Run to blow. down. Give me a sec. When the railroad comes off the ground, it's definitely a lot more treacherous. Floating is a warning sign that the wrecker could flip. Yeah, you. Yeah. Oh. If you mess this up, next thing you know, we're heading down the bank with the truck. To avoid the unthinkable. Did you try a little more? Oh, uh, nope. Jason and Merv must work together. As soon as my front wheel starts popping up, I'm gonna let off. To shift the load between the two rotators. 
So no single record is tilting too much. I'm floating. Okay, hang on. Let me get a little on me then, buddy. Yeah. He'll load up, float. Then I'll load up, he'll unfloat. Let's go. It's just like a little dance. One person leads, then you pirouette, and the next person leads. Okay, go ahead a little bit. We're just doing the one, two, one, two. We're moving it a couple feet at a time. We're coming. I'm not even watching, I'm just watching my truck. We're in an unstable environment here. My eyes today are more on my wreckers. Probably one of the most intense recoveries I've done with you, buddy. These are the good ones. We gotta get this thing up. We gotta keep going. But as the semi creeps up the bank... What are you seeing? An extraordinary obstacle... The trailer is gonna be at that bank in a second. ...lies ahead. There's a retaining wall to try to get the casualty to come up over that. It's a big scenario. 20 feet high. Look at the trailer. Eight feet in the air. Clearing the hurdle will be a tall order. Just touching the beginning of the wall. We're gonna lift the unit more so than pull it. Put this trailer right on top of that cement wall. Here we go. But the headway. Let's think a little bit here. Now what we're concerned about, if we pull up like that, it's gonna pull up, but also into the bank, right? It's causing trouble at the front end this trailer off the ground. We're actually pinching the front of the trailer onto the frame of the truck. Ain't gonna get its elbow. To counter the pinch point. Both sides, Jordo. Yeah. They run lines from both wreckers, gaining more control over the tractor. It's just a matter of boom angles and proper cable technique in order to get it to clear. Okay, we're hooked up. Okay. Going forward, boys, watch your feet. Merv repositions to make room for the wreck to land. We move on to phase two, which is finishing the rest of it that's down there. Soon, the trailer will be between the two operators. Yelling is not really an option. So Team Aggressive ups their game. Headphones really help us to make sure that we're working in unison. Yep, now we're good. OK, let's go. But success is far from guaranteed. Pull on a unit like this, anything can break. You can hear your heart beating, that's for sure. It's pulling it in the bank. That's scary. Don't come into that one. We're hooked on the landing legs. I'm ripping into the trailer. You don't want to do that. Not good. This is dangerous. In the Fraser Canyon. Don't come into that wall. An extreme obstacle. Oh. Right. As team aggressive against the wall. We're hooked onto the landing legs. 
This is dangerous. We're really in a jam here. All right, let's just die. You're definitely stuck between a rock and a hard place right now. As the day marches on... Jamie Davis is here. That is something else. Jamie... and a second red record. Big job, multiple trucks, multiple people. Very exciting to be part of that. No way! With mechanic Brian Rash arrive. What a deal, eh? <laughs> Wreck of the year. Gotta put her down there a little further. I still can't believe that thing's standing upright. I think there would have been some odors in the cab if I would have been in there. <laughs> Two nights ago, the 18 wheeler took a serious plunge. Oh, the guy were walked away from it. Unreal, eh? What about, um, you see that little area there? Across from us. Three hours into the recovery. I could put the old general in there. Jamie is here to help. And then we're gonna reach over and grab each piece up over that bank and go from there. All right. We're gonna bring the general in, our heavy hitter. It's perfect for the spot of the job. But to add the classic workhorse. Stop your traffic, let me know what your last vehicle is. They need to close the canyon highway. There's a lot of pressure on us as fast as we can. We have to get this unit on the road. With lines from the two rotators to the tractor, the 45-ton General will take on the trailer to power the semi up. On that hook. And the general can keep the back end of the trailer up into the air as we come up and over top of the edge of the bank. Nice and easy, buddy. It's going to be a tight, tricky maneuver. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. If we don't create some height, that trailer might bust in half. <laughs> Nice and easy, Jamie. Jamie catching up? Yeah, yeah. Jay, pull your line. Front's coming up. But cresting the blacktop is the moment of truth. This unit is on the brink of splitting wide open. Oh, it'll be easy, easy, guys. Oh, go as far as you can, Jamie. And space is running out. I want to get the general out of here. Okay, hold it there, Jamie. Everybody stop. Yep, I'll stop. There's only so much room on the highway. We have to relocate the general where he can pull the trailer around. Got quite the line out, Foreman. Yeah, me too. We have to see this through to the end. The two rotators... coax the rig into position... Keep coming. ...for the final pull. Heck, yeah. Here he goes. Yeah. I'm pulling. This time, Brian takes the controls. Trying to make things happen. Power to us, let's go. It is moving. We got lots of brake lights up here, just slow down. Jamie keeps pulling, I'll keep fishing. 
How long is the delay here? We gotta move fast and get things solved. Oh, General. Get on. What? We're a little bit sketched out on if she's gonna come out in one piece or not. Let off, let off. In the canyon. Bunch of guys working on this accident scene up here. Keep going. The final stage. Oh, General. Of the biggest wreck of the year. Staying up the front where Hangs in the balance. Let off, let off. There's so much damage. There's definitely high potential for falling debris. Oh my god. Uh, I went right through the door. Not being how long or anything? Nope. Takes as long as it takes. There's a lot of pressure on us to get the road open, but we still have to be cautious about bringing this thing up. Give me a little bit more, Jamie. Okay, bring it in. Okay, that's it. With the trailer fully landed, one last tug of war. And the air. Two dollars. Reels the tractor in. We're on the road. There were some tense moments. But at the end of the day, it uh, came up pretty smoothly. That job was done as best as it could possibly be done. Perfect. You're clear. I don't think it'll be too long before they open that up. Get the record out of there. Ten westbound. All right, uh, we're all clear here. It's always good to keep the closure down to a minimum. Oh, and you start to move. Come on, see you later. See ya. You always have memories of recoveries. This is definitely one of those ones that would be like top shelf. That was, that was a big one. It's good to work with my brother. And when we do get the opportunity to do it, it's always fun. That's good, they got her open. Thank you. I'm really happy that they brought the two rotators out. Canyon's clear, both directions. Leaving Jamie thinking about his own fleet. Everything here is adding up for us. We just don't have the gear like we used to. You gotta kinda keep the old ones around and the new ones. Years ago, let me just lift it right up. Jamie had a 75-ton rotator. Beauty, eh? Hey? But competition... Yeah, we won't need your iron today. ...on the mountain. Thanks for coming next time. And hard times at his former Alberta base. It's really slowed down quite a bit. I'm getting concerned, yeah led Jamie to shift gears. It's hard for you to get rid of one of your favorite trucks. Good luck with it, it's gonna be a great truck for you. I've had the biggest, baddest, best machines. I'm used to the power and versatility. But Jamie found new success. Wow, uh, that one's nice. Yeah. In iron built for highway hauls. We're moving forward, we're expanding our business. We're like a phoenix rising from the ashes. And now, after a winter of major wrecks. Big recovery jobs are something that's considered technical. We're doing a lot these days. Jamie has a plan in motion. She's a beauty, real beauty. To add specialized iron back into his world. We have to get into the game. If we're gonna be doing these big recovery jobs, we need it. We gotta have it. A 
Let's try to put it on the coast. 130 kilometers northwest. Possible vehicle accident on the hill. On the Coquihalla. Shot five is low, okay. Doesn't look like any trucks are getting through. Okay, I'll be there as soon as I can. Brandon responds to a call. I had some pictures sent to me just now. After a grueling day in the canyon. My role tonight is to not complain, not whine. To the driver, okay? Just do the job, get it done for people. That's big for me. But arriving on scene. It's a sad state of events. Somebody's not going home. Brandon discovers a life has been lost. There was a semi in the middle of the highway, and another trucker hit the back of him. I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing enough. Yeah, it's a bad day. When I was 16 years old, I can remember going to my first fatality accident. From that point on, you really become more and more hardened all the time. Ten years ago... Oh, guys underneath the wheel, the guys underneath the wheel. Is he really? Brandon was also 16. Oh it just turned into a 1801 fatal. The first time he encountered loss on the coke. I don't know how Brandon deals with it. He's been around some accidents. I showed up about 30 seconds after the accident happened. I jumped out to see if I could help, but it's too late. Guys are guys and want to put on a tough outer skin. It's something we don't talk about. I've done a complete lane closure. Anyone coming down into our work zone here, not, no one will get hurt. And that's it. Okay? So you know. Yeah. After a big event happens like this, we've got highways people, police agencies. All these people come together in one big team. Highway supervisor Tom Agar. The analyst will have to do his investigation and operations manager, Brad Bushill. It's gonna be a fairly lengthy closure. Coordinate as a crash reconstructionist moves in. It's a lot bigger than just a normal accident. And these investigations can last anywhere from six to 12 hours. This is gonna be shut down for hours and hours. Holy, you self-founders, you're gonna be sitting there a while. What happened on the coke? It was pretty bad. The driver got killed in that one. A tragic accident. It's horrendous. Has Brandon. Not terrible. And highway officials on scene. When you see someone that just lost it all, it's brutal. You really appreciate what you have. With the crash under investigation. This side of the highway is completely shut down. Transports face a long wait. I've already been here for hours, and I want to be here for another 12. If you're a trucker and you're stuck, that's pretty tough. And they have a family to see and a job to complete. The trucking industry is pretty vital to BC and the economy. It's always best practice to get the trucks on their way. So rolling up on site. I don't know what's going on over here. We're gonna make a cross over here. We're gonna just fill up the median with bring a few dump truck loads out. Big machines will build a turnaround on the fly. Never seen anyone do this before. This is incredibly innovative on their part. Perfect. We're gonna flatten it all nice so we can get these 53 footers turned around. With 130 tons of dirt laid. Building a road. First time I've ever seen this. 
in less than an hour. The escape route is complete. Tell these guys to come up a little bit more. It's looking really good. Let's go! The highways guys, they're taking care of the truckers. They're doing exceptional service. They did a damn good job, I'll tell you. Didn't take too long when we got the right equipment here, boss. highways people we can always count on them and that's a great thing mission accomplished 70 trucks that were waiting they don't have to spend the night on the coquihalla sometimes we have bad days we just get through our rough times i think that's a win Warming up good. Another thing, Faraday. Two weeks later. Exactly, I don't see that every day. Yeah, good shape. Feels real good. A wrecker new to Jamie's fleet. When this truck came up, I had to get it. It's the Fraser Valley. This is an iconic machine. It's a, a special truck. I've been working on buying this truck for quite some time. Days ago, south of the border, wow. Jamie picked up the special rotator. It's beautiful. This truck is really a part of history. Just stand clear! In the 90s, the unit marked a new era in the city of Los Angeles. It was the first rotator that LA Fire Department ever had in their fleet. It was designed and built as a result of the Northridge earthquake. The disaster that affected millions revealed a need for heavyweight support. It's the truck that really started what we know as heavy rescue today. This is so cool. The unit's clean, machinery is top shelf, and it's still in excellent shape. Today, it's a pretty cool truck. On his way back home, I'm very excited to show everybody the new truck. Jamie makes a stop at the aggressive tow yard. No corrosion nowhere. Yeah, the old R. I'm not a big fan of it in general, but this one's been kept in very, very mint condition. Yeah, so there she is. It's amazing, the original paint, like the one thing California has is clean, eh? Everything's like brand new. All the controls. It's a nice truck. Everybody likes running nice equipment. It's one nice thing about buying off the fire department, eh? Yeah. Maintenance program. The truck is older, but it's like brand new. I'm getting the best of both worlds here. Even the engine, like open the engine up here. Oh yeah, just spotless, eh? You could eat off that frame. I think it was a good purchase. I'm sure he's very happy with it. If you're an equipment buff like I am, having this iconic machine in your fleet, nothing tops that. Oh, there's a tank in it. But for the historic LA Rotator, the real test. This is a, a prize. Is the road ahead? This truck's gonna work harder than it ever has in its whole life here. 
its work is just beginning. This time on Highway Through Hell. This is a redneck kind of job. 10 years of bent metal mayhem. Hey! Jamie. What's gonna happen next? And a team of heavy rescue legends. Well, I've seen some strange stuff. Look back. Gong show. At their toughest. Oh. Wildest. Ooh. Recoveries. Oh, of the past decade. Oh yeah, baby! <laughs> Highway Through Hell's been going for 10 years now. Unbelievable. Jamie Davis, Ron Dave, Florida Mountain. Well, we got her right up till we're kissing paint here. Each job is different. You wake up in the morning, have your coffee, and the phone's gonna ring, and it's like, what am I doing now? Where am I going? Oh, the guy! Oh, no, 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 no! Lots of interesting wrecks. We've been through lots. It's kind of like that. Train wreck thing, you can't help but watch. Oh my god, watch out! Bermuda Triangle of Truck Accidents. Highway 5, Coquihalla. Come on, let's go! Straighten your wheel! What it can be like on the Coke, what, it, what would you describe it as? At the amusement park there, they've got a, uh, a game, it's called Whack-A-Ball. It's like that towing on the Coquihalla, too. It almost looks like a neck. Two wrecks over there? The worst weather and the worst conditions, dangerous situations. I don't feel like dying today. Dangerous game, man. Dangerous game. There's so many different things that can happen, right? Even as a veteran, you look at that and you go, holy man. It looks like something out of a war zone. A lumber truck, 130 some thousand pounds, collided with three other vehicles, like a battering ram. It is a mess. I saw all those colors. It looked like a Picasso painting. And it was hot pepper sauce. I'm not kidding you. That hot sauce was on everything. Really? There you go. OK, try it on. I was amazed at how you strapped this up with the pallets. One thing about the towing industry, you learn to recognize advantages that the untrained eye might not see. We're gonna go after the lumber truck. What the viewers don't probably know is uh, when I hooked onto that lumber trailer. It's off the road. I really wanted to go just have a shower, get this hot sauce off me. I broke my underlift. No way. Busted the crossbar right off the end of it. Oopsie. We'll just extend it out and uh, clean it up. Go back to the highway shop, weld it all back together, and we were back down the hill towing again. That big mess, start to finish, it was four hours to get traffic flowing. And give yourself a pat on the back. I mean, pretty, pretty amazing. That's trucking. What's going on there? Steady as she goes. Take on. Pull ahead. Personal relationships are big in this business. Oh, you know, big time. Well, this is exciting. For me, you fit your life in around the business, mm -hmm. and the business comes first. You OK? Hold it. When you're working with a group of guys, you build, like, camaraderie, and it's like family, basically. Hold on. Yeah, basically. You know yourself, you've always got to keep an eye on the worker, but when it's your own flesh and blood, I think definitely you keep an eye on them a little bit tighter. So this recovery, way over the bank. I was told it was a single axle garbage truck. I figured, okay, 
we'll take uh, my truck and uh, the 25 ton there. That should be good. Yeah. Three hours into the bush. Oh, smokes. That's a dry drive logging truck set up as a roll off. Wow. Oh, this is a really big job. If you're a recovery guy like you are, Ken, this is what you live for. A job like this, you would just love. Move in at all? That is a real challenge. That's a full meal for those two trucks. You're pushing it to the limit. Whoop. He has to look out for his chest, so we'll all be looking out for him. I noticed Val was right there by your side, your protector, <laughs> yeah. watching over you on that job. I'm getting older now, and after I had heart problems, she kept me in line. I couldn't imagine Sherry coming with me in a job like that. What would she be saying? Call me when you get back. <laughs> That'd be it. We got to get the brakes off. Dylan's coming down. So on this wreck, your son-in-law is involved down the bank. I really don't like to put him in a dangerous spot. Don't get rid of balance. Unfortunately, that's part of the business. You and Ken have the bond where you trust each other. It's gonna lie to him. But, you know, you basically instinctively know that one break that can't be undone mm -hmm. isn't going to really affect the job much. I know Ken, he'll stew on that problem. Time to play. Got it, I'll release. Yep, simple. What did Ken say when he found out later on? He laughed about it. <laughs> Hold there. Getting close to midnight now. It's too heavy, we couldn't get it up over the bank. Really? Working with Dylan, he said, let's grab the SN and drive it up, take out the same way. This way comes out the way when it. Dylan was thinking outside of the box, and I went with it. I want that low line that I have, put it on the token. You come up with that idea. Some of those jobs, you just got to stand back, take a look at it for a minute. Keep her going. That job probably wouldn't have happened that night if it wasn't for some young blood in the family. Are we out? Looks good, you're on the deck. Now I am beat. Happy to be the old guy going home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. See you, Dylan. Good job. A sneak peek at this season of Heavy Rescue 401. This thing can snap and go anywhere. Hey, I'm in there. Watch out, bring it, bring it. Let's do the roll now. Hey! Hey! Whoa! Watch out, watch out, watch out. Ah. A big giant turtle. <laughs> the humor is a big part of the show for me. We got the panda bear and the captain for doing good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where is the panda hat now? It seems to have disappeared. Like, as you still have it. <laughs> I'm a gazelle. It's the handsome operators. <laughs> Light the fire and kick the tires. I'm not going to waste no time trying to pull this door open. Oh, no, the door does work. Yeah. <laughs> Today is Merv's birthday. You know what Merv's doing on his birthday? Rolling over at Sammy's. So you get called out on your birthday. Not unusual for this business. <laughs> Instead of getting balloons for my birthday, I got a lovely set of airbags to play with. OK, fire up that compressor. You've got a lot of people working on that job. Not happy. That a compressor unit, what was the issue with that? When we dumped our new gas on top, it must have dislodged some old rotten gas, and it, uh, it ended up getting jammed up in the jets of the carburetor. Yeah, I need something small to poke it with. Oh, I know. I got a toothpick. Where did you get the idea to use a toothpick on the jets? When you're on a job, I mean, you just got to think outside the box all the yeah. time. We'll get these all maxed out. But yeah, we'll just... There's quite a history with airbags, and they've been in the industry for a long, long time now. Front line. 
we don't use them often, but if you need them and you don't have them, you're hating life. Right. Touchdown, boys. Okay, pulling forward. There's a lot of value in that kind of service. Mm -hmm. Get that tractor trailer over, save the load. Going home to eat my cake. It was late at night. What did you do when you got home on your birthday? Went to bed, buddy. Did you? That was the end of her hat. You know, in the towing industry, you can make plans, and that's when the phone rings every time. When you're being watched, you always got that pressure on you. All right, they're out. Here we go. Everything involved here, probably well over $5 million. You're making sure everything just goes just right. That's right. Decent, Jimmy. Stanley had this car hauler go off the road. We don't really do a lot of car carriers. Mm -hmm. It's in down. I don't remember more than maybe one or two in my whole career. This is a million dollar load. This was an expensive load of high-end vehicles. Let's get pulling. We had the customer there too. No damages on those cars. Right? Yeah. Okay, so so one, two, three, four, no damage. Well, you're minding your P's and Q's on that job. You want to put on a good show for him. I'm pulling the truck sideways. What I find on these car carriers is they're very low. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, stop. It hangs up on everything. And that's, that's a bit of a trick. Now, I can do a high line maybe, eh? And then just put that in the loop, you know? This was a job where I wish I'd had a rotator, you know, to be able to bring that trailer up like this. That's right, make a big difference. Can I play for just a bit? Yeah. Colin, he was on a day off from a cement truck job. He showed up and said, hey, I'm gonna come and give you a hand today. Stop. Four o'clock, man, I got your union. <laughs> nice personality, great guy. Yeah, one of the guys you don't forget and no. you miss. There we go. Here with my neighbors playing a little round of golf. Something we like to do. There you go. Better than a day in a tow truck. Oh, geez, you miss it. Don't give me that. Oh. Very happy. I enjoy my weekends off with my friends. If he was to phone me and say he was coming back, I'd buy him a new truck tomorrow. <laughs> He's in here. It's like something out of a war movie. Do you find that trucking companies or old-time drivers will tell you names of places by their nickname? Definitely, yeah. This is a real dirty, hard wreck. You're in charge. You've made a bit of a career change. You're no longer under Ken's wing. Yeah. Hey. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Always wonderful when there's barriers in the way. comes around the corner and those barriers rip the trailer to shreds and bent it all up. Just see if you can tuck it in. When it came to the time to get this thing off the highway, we had to improvise and use the skid steer to help upright that trailer and uh, use the 50 ton to get it up there. Keep going. We used to own it and you bought it. It's probably working pretty good for you still. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing machine. 
That's good enough for me, buddy. That corner is notorious, that one. I've done jobs in that very spot. Wow. In our case, the trailer came around the corner and ripped the axles out of it. So he's ridden this guardrail, and he's knocked out eight of them down there. But I think they weigh like 3,000 pounds a piece. Those no posts do a lot of damage. I call it Rainbow Corner, because all the cars that crash in that corner leave their paint. It's interesting to watch you do the same job in the same corner. Yeah, the dispatch will be like, I don't know where this is, but do you know? And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah we're exactly. on the way. Keep rocking, keep rocking. A sneak peek at this season of Heavy Rescue 401. This is going to be a full shutdown. It's unbelievable. The truck has just rammed up onto the concrete bridge. There's pieces, there's steering axles, there's drive shafts. I couldn't recognize anything. That's a truck. Fire in a hole. <laughs> so here's Mighty Mole. We've all built trucks and rebuilt a lot of stuff. It's a terrific hobby. This thing might run. Again, it might not. For some reason, tow truck guys like working on things that turn fresh air and raw fuel into noise and smoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This wreck here is the famous mail wreck. Yeah. We were called in to remove the tractor because it was leaking fluids oh, into, the, into the river. Let me just lift it right up. You ready? We ended up seizing the truck. You'd never think that that truck upside down being a wreck. Heavy wreckers on here. In the end, it would become a wrecker. No. <laughs> when it did turn into 126. You know, it was actually a, a very nice, beautiful truck. Nice highway hauler. Just like that. Piece by piece, day by day, part by part, you're building your dream. They had, they had a pretty bad wreck up there. Nice. Oh, yeah! Sounds like a Sasquatch. So, Nicole, you've been around since the show started worked your way up, and now you're running the show. Oh, Holy. I often get asked, how did this show start? One of our executive producers was moving to the coast. He was traveling along the coke. Bada bing, bada bang, he breaks down. And lo and behold, the biggest tow truck he's ever seen. Flashing light, shiny red. Chrome. Chrome and gleam. Yeah. Shows up. And he's like, what is this thing? The next thing you know, production's knocking on our door. Normally, the process, if you want to put a show together, it involves going out with a crew and, and shooting a bunch of stuff, and then you put something snazzy together. Best part of the whole truck is that horn. I love that horn. It turns out your former employee, Kevin Ritchie, loved shooting. Just trying to get used to what all these numbers on the screen do. I tell you, that filming that, that Kevin did, we just go back to the shop, laugh at each other, and, you know, hang out. I feel like I gotta get all the action. We hit the jackpot because Kevin is like, here's a bag of tape. That's really, really how the show was born. Towing's brutal, and filming the show is very much the same thing. Oh. You all right, Carly? Look what we do for TV, man. <laughs> when we're out on a scene, you're just living in the moment. You're getting what you can get, making sure you're safe cold weather and the wind's blowing at you and your gear's giving you troubles. Your crews are dealing with the same problems, so but we just never see it. That was the big one. Carl, can you move back a bit? Thank you. I remember a recovery that I directed, the huge mudslide on Highway 1. I remember that. You shoot the digger, I'll shoot the truck, okay? I had lifted one leg up, 
and I realized that my other leg was not coming, I got suctioned into the mud. Tough. Stand back. I uh, keep coming. Thinking, if you bail, you're not going to shoot this recovery. Your camera's going to be in the mudslide. No, I'll go Colin. Stay We're all fighting the fight. You know what? I haven't eaten all day. And camera crews are like your ghost buddy that's always there. Friendships have developed over the years between everybody. We look forward to seeing them every year when they come back. Pass up, up you see everybody. Here it comes. Hands up. What we have is a great big Greek salad. You see a lot of weird things on the highway. Uh, you know, I've seen some strange stuff. Gong show. And... <laughs> what is that? Silver. 40 grand in bars. What I find with the, the cement industry in general is they're a very, very safe they're, industry. They're very particular. That was a weird accident. See what the action is when we get there. The operator took the general precautions, but there was a, a slight overlook. All the weight had settled on the bottom. And when that truck started up again and the drum turned. High center of gravity, boom. Over it went. There's no decal that says lift here. This thing is round. We're just using cable slings. Drop side. There we go. And the hope is that cable is going to cause friction steel to steel. And uh, we're going to have some solid pulling points. Beautiful. That'll work. We've done some extra safety rigging so we don't flip over. The trees were taking a lot of the weight. And we had multi part line in there. The 250 tons. Perfect for that job. Just bring it all the way. But not only do we have to lift this thing out of the ditch. Boom, all the way there, Gord. Hey, that's part of the battle. We've got to be able to get the 60,000 pound ore boat onto the road. Just keep bringing it. That's it, Gord. Get this thing loaded and get it out of here. Not very often you'd handle a job like that, though. A little bit different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, in, in this case, it worked out great. We came, we pulled that out, and there it goes. A sneak peek at this season of Heavy Rescue 401. Isn't that just something else, eh? Holy. This is a big deal. We're going to try and get the truck off the wall as quick as we can. You don't go to an accident scene every day and see a truck hanging over a bridge. This is huge. This is like a goat's trail, this place. One thing with back roads, it's really tough even with a big record to go up those roads, period. Jump up! Jump out! That's a lot of weight. Roads slide out, you know, things happen. Everything's gone, yeah. It is really dangerous work. This is a job where GPS guided this guy way out into an area where trucks shouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, it's a tight, narrow, little dirt road, and it's it's not big truck friendly. No. This is ridiculous. I'm pulling you to her. My truck's about to go over a ravine. So well, this was really in Reliable's area, and uh, you got called out to give a hand to those guys. They had James Luke there with his 30-ton, and uh, he was having a hard time with it, fighting a losing battle. It's a pretty tiny little road. <laughs> when I get to this scene, this one here was definitely one of the beard-stroking moments. <laughs> okay, let's get this going. Kind of nervous. Whoa! Whoa! 
you definitely don't want to underthink something like this. It'll end in disaster. It can, 100%. It really would. It's coming. You in the truck. Can I really? Push your door open a bit. So I can bail? Yeah. So when you were pulling on the front end of the tractor trailer, Mitch had to be in that rig that could possibly go over the bank. Man, I need a new pair of underwear. Pretty big trust in what you're doing. Holding on the wheel going, I know Merv's gonna bring me out of this. <laughs> I hope Merv's right? gonna bring you out of this. Right, right. <laughs> Here she comes. Brakes, put them all on. Trying to recover a wreck off a cliff. You have to have that trust. All right, fair enough. If I were to put my, my life in anybody's hands, it'd be the two of them. Yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. <laughs> so let's turn that around. If Mitch was running the wrecker and you were in the truck steering, would you trust him? 100%. That was stressful. <laughs> Since leaving towing, I'm here in the pit. Here, it's simplicity. You wake up at your alarm, head into work for your start time, and do your day. <laughs> Who knows? Down the road, I might step foot back in that truck. But for now, I'm happy being where I'm at. This time. This time, this time, this, this, this time, on Highway Through Hell. You're kind of a mysterious guy. You're Dave Pettit, the voice of Highway Through Hell. Yeah. The biggest storm of winter has brought the coke to a crawl. I'm just a guy that's like, okay, we need a little help connecting these two thoughts. You know, get, get me in there to, uh, to help connect. The tanker is hauling methanol an explosive fuel destined for a mine located at the top of the mountain. Leave your brakes on. So really what you're narrating is facts about wrecks, technical information. How did your job start for you? What did you do before? I'd worked in radio, voicing commercials. Maintenance crews on the Coke are in the thick of a midwinter storm. Technology has changed everything. There's times where I've been down in Mexico and I've recorded in a studio down there. <laughs> so Dave, you're telling me that you're in Mexico relaxing and I'm up the coke chaining up. An Arctic cold front has blown in. Oh, yeah, I'm on the right side of the microphone there, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue what they want. It at the beginning of the show, we have a funny moment where we ask the new guy to dig a trench around an empty barrel in case it leaks. Yeah. You got a shovel in your truck, a little one? We got a flat one. How do you create a humorous side to a voice that's so deep and... It's just playful with it. Jamie's given the new guy and his crew one extra job. Have you figured out that they're just <laughs> with you? <laughs> How would you make that sound serious? Jamie's given the new guy a very important job. In case we have a fuel spill here. <laughs> After 10 years of being the voice of the show, what keeps you going? There's just so many epic events that happen out on the road. Forging on, Jamie remains focused. Yeehaw. On the road ahead. It's gonna be really cool for the viewers to put a face to the voice. The fact that, you know, I get to tell this story. I have the best job in the world. A sneak peek at this season of Heavy Rescue 401. We'll make this thing move. Hopefully it doesn't wanna play games. Okay, you're a good call. I'm facing down the barrel of a gun. That's a lot of force there. We're going to pull that bridge across this gap. Yeah, I got a front end in the air. Big iron. It's a challenge. Well, I'm fascinated you know. by super heavy weight. Come on. 
He's heavy. You're dealing with a lot of complex equipment issues, you know, physics. Yeah, you're you're always one second away from being a hero or zero. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable, man. This is a really cool rock truck job, you know, just like job you'd like to do. That's right. Wow. Unreal. That's a lot of weight you're playing with, especially hanging over a bank like that. Okay, let's go. When you're upriding something like that, you got to make sure. you got enough weight on top yeah. to be packing the weight on the bottom. Having the excavator is an extra resource, and they're powerful. If it's there, use it. It's easy on your trucks. Slowly! Whoa, whoa, whoa. He just needs a second to catch up with you. Those things are 500 to 1 reduction, so... One thing, you know, with a different variety of equipment there, the general, it's ultra-slow but ultra-powerful. Just expect a little shock load, right? OK. A little bit more. And you've got the newer hydraulic truck that moves faster. When you're working with multiple equipment, one person's got to be in charge because then you're catching everything that's going on in your job. Right. Hey, you're good. Yeah. I understand that one of your drivers doesn't speak English. His name is Renato. He was from South America. How do you explain to him what you want him to do? We had like sign language, believe it or not. Uncouple. I'd say unhook it. <laughs> We got along famously. Okay, going up. I noticed the general lifting up. It was taking most of the pull, obviously. Right. You're powering out. Let me in here, okay, for a minute. Okay, stand back. Ooh. The old general made some noises that I've never heard before, I'll tell yeah. you that. A little bit of an act to keep the lines uh, even. Turn the throttle up a bit. You know, Greg, very new operator at the time, but Greg was switched on. He picked up faster yeah, than anybody else. Saying, there's a lot to it, mm -hmm. and it, you don't learn it overnight. You know that. It takes years. It takes years. Decades, and you're still learning. Give her. There we go. Good job skilled operators who are going to be dedicated and, and put in the time, it's tough when they leave you because they become such a part of your business. I know. Just park it on the shoulder behind me, basically. It's coming. It's going to go here. Perfect. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Watch out. There you go. Having the tenacity to take on a job, make the, the tough decisions, those operators are very, very far and few between. We're in Vanderhoof. We've been here coming up six years. How's he doing? No, he's not too bad. It's not a real busy lifestyle, but it's uh, busy enough. Got my own tow truck. Life after highway through hell, it's been good. I love it up here. It's beautiful and sunny up there right now. In the summertime, you know, obviously there's time off at, you know, for you. Yeah, exactly. You try to do things, you know, for yourself and fit in some you time. Hey, Case. What are you doing, buddy? We're cutting some numbers for some address signs. With my wife, Chelsea, we run a wood shop. Just yeah. calming the nerves and zoning out Pretty of much. towing for a while. Yeah. We make wooden signs, then all kinds of home decor. Working here in the backyard keeps us close to the kids, let them play and enjoy life. So tell me, how do you feel the summer different than the winter? You know, September is my favorite month in towing because it's not busy yet. You don't have to worry about sweating it out, you know, that kind of thing. Wax on, wax off. Can I drive or what? Yeah. 
No. Well, let's go. These are the type of days I love driving this. A lot of people seem to think that we only exist during the winter, but usually throughout the summer, we go to the west coast of Vancouver Island. Ah, uh, you can let go. Yay, he's up. On our 20th anniversary, we thought we'd put a kite in the air, and, and it just kind of rekindled the youthful spirit in me. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to have, like, Highway Through Hill in the summertime. Yeah, that might be an interesting idea. Spin-off. Yeah, <laughs> spin-off. Summertime towing companies, a lot of them do work for the community. Yes. We're just delivering those brand new tractors to the customers. If the farmers don't grow, what we can eat? Nothing. Okay, done, done, done. We're busy summer and winter, but you know, when you just want to zone out, what's your favorite thing to do? The family and I will go out and just enjoy the outdoors. <laughs> it's nice to get out and enjoy life a little bit. And usually, generally, where my cell phone can't ring, <laughs> You're guaranteed a peaceful time and relax. Park back there, holy cow! I think a lot of people like to watch Highway Through Hell because it's always something different going on. Nobody really knows what's going to happen next. Look at this debacle. Holy moly. We, I think, on our best day, can try to plan, but at the end of the day, really it's the world out there that you're re reacting to things. Oh my God. I liken the job to being a Marine. You know, you never give up, you never can stop, and you're, you're always the guy holding the log, no matter what, right? That's right. So this wreck you're doing, what happened with that? Fully loaded tractor trailer in the ditch jackknife. It's a mangled mess, that's for sure. Straighten her out this way. Coming. And then. We have another one. In the traffic flow up behind it, you get another pile up that happens. It's pretty difficult coordinating two wrecks at the same time. Yeah. I got a call telling me there's been a bad wreck. We're usually running with uh, a few competent guys that are capable of dealing with the jobs. There's just so many moving parts to a wreck, really. They're very complex. Oh, man. Hundred years of winemaking. Oh. We're going to have to hand bomb it. I'm sort of always nervous about letting the other guys run with that. That's sort of something as a boss you want to deal with yourself, right? Yeah, this is one of those recovery jobs that, you know, I'd be in on all day long. Just remember, this whole entire load has got to go in that trailer. By the time I got mine done, it was evening time. Ah! Rolled back in there, give him a hand. What are you thinking in the back of your mind? Are you thinking, you know, we might not be able to get this job done? I don't quit. I don't quit at anything. Jim, we're here to do all the hard work. <laughs> I think that that is a common theme with the guys who stay in this business a long time. It's mm -hmm. the tenacity to keep going. When you've got that built in your DNA, like you do, you're the guy who's in that business for 50 years. Just pulling the last one off the road right now. Open for business. <laughs> A sneak peek at this season of Heavy Rescue 401. Ready to rock and roll? And we're gonna drag it down the hill. It could hit us, it could fall on us. Never done it, and I'm scared as hell. We're seeing a real change in the last 10 years since the show's started. I mean, there's been people pass away Exactly. 
Come on. It's in my blood. As I said, I may be 65, but I still got it. Back in the young days, we would have time for things, you know. We used to have so much more time. In this day and age, everybody wants instant now, right today. Time is very, very valuable, it seems. Hey, buddy. <laughs> this is the kind of call that makes a tow truck driver feel good, because you're helping a family get somewhere safe. Thank you. Coming out here definitely helps me relax. It's hard, I think, to grasp the fact that time is moving on. That's a tough boy. Absolutely. Tough deal. Yeah. 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 You know, we all carry that, right? Why aren't you trying for it, Matt? The opportunity's there to try. We perform miracles every day. The impossible takes slightly longer. To be doing this business, to be dealing with the stress 24 hours a day. That's a hard life. Yes. But that's dedication, and you go at any time, you leave your family, you leave everything behind. That's your life. I appreciate what you do. As we get a little older, we're seeing the younger generation coming up. He's my guy. Prince of the Coquihalla, right here. Right there. Look. He's the king. Right there. OK, go ahead just a little bit. You're going to be able to run this thing or what? When you grow up in the business as a young worker, one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to step forward or you're going to hide behind curtains. That's what we're going to. You're just making a pie. Really? What do you think them semis do? Just jump out of the ditch by themselves? OK, this one. And watch what's going on. Huh? Why am I doing this? Because you're young. That's why. This goes to the back rear ends, OK? Time marches on. Nobody waits for us anymore. No, no. They were not so important anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're going to be the boss of the company one day, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Put the head right by that concrete. OK. Traffic control here. My stop my pending. Uh, you're stopping as well. Copy that. Brandon's doing his own flagging. I mean, your yeah. daughter, she's grown up. Hard to believe. Yeah. JT, unwrap this. There's a bunch of kids, and they're going to obviously pick that up and hopefully just move on with it and get even better and bigger. We're going to see a change over the next 10 years in who's doing what and where and when. Thank you. It's a brand new song. Oh. Keep an eye on this place, son, so I don't have to. All right. This is a redneck kind of job. Whoa! What the? There's been some terrific challenges over 10 years that, you know, luckily, the camera's been around to share with. We live off that adrenaline rush. What's going to happen next? Yeah, definitely. Oh! Holy jeez! Our truckers are tough sons of bitches. I love it. I think when you're doing that job, people maybe can live through that. It's like an action thriller movie or something like that, you know? Action reality TV show. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> You know what amazes me is when filming began on Highway Through Hell. Yeah. I don't think we ever thought that it would become such a really a worldwide success. Never. What's your favorite yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Really, in a sense, in a weird way, become kind of immortal. I can see my son's sons watching the show. Exactly. You know, years to come and going, Wow, that was Grandpa. They don't call it the Smasher for nothing. What's the worst that could happen? 
everything's changing. The TV show is sort of uh, evolving as well, and people are really interested in that, how it's sort of growing with us. Oh, on, you old girl. I guess as long as there's tow trucks and people interested in the show, then hey, man, this this could keep on going. I love this kind of job. Happiness is a good day of fishing, that's for sure. So, Al, we'll see you next time on Highway Through Hell. See you next time, James. Right, wristly from it.